place uh, for what might be a meeting with Kim and then negotiations on uh, Korea's denuclearization. No secret that he has been at odds with Rex Tillerson over some of that. The other aspect of all of this, too, is that there's a lot of trade deals, difficult trade deals and negotiations that the president will be engaged in for the next nine months. Uh, and he wanted to have somebody very strong and on the same page as him at the State Department for all of that. Shep? John was listening to the president today as he spoke uh, there out uh, on the lawn. And it sounded like what he was saying was, I'm not finished making changes, not, not just yet. And he tweeted about that last week. He said something about it in the cabinet room as well. He, he did say out on the lawn that he's getting close to getting the cabinet that he wants. But the suggestion is there's maybe a couple of other folks. One, one, of, the, one of the big people that we talk about here uh, potentially leaving the White House is H.R. McMaster, the national security advisor. I mean, there have been a lot of rumblings about that flying around for a long time. Uh, I'm told by people close to him that, uh, you know, they are trying to get that four star for him. And uh, maybe at the point when he gets that four star, he may choose to leave the White House. Uh, but we don't know yet, and we don't know if this is going to happen within the next month or two. Uh, certainly, we're led to believe it's not. But maybe by this time next year, we'll have a different national security advisor. Or maybe by this time next week, Chef, you just never know. Yeah, sometimes you check the calendar, sometimes you check your watch. We'll know when exactly. we know. Well, now, a separate matter, and the, the president's personal assistant, uh, out with security. Separate matter, but, but interesting. Yeah, this one's really puzzling. It's Johnny McEntee. He was the uh, quarterback for uh, the University of Connecticut uh, before he came here to uh, join the White House as the president's, quote, body man. He would literally be at the president's side uh, on, on just about every trip. He'd be the guy that would bring out uh, the speech uh, and put it on the podium before the president spoke. Uh, he suddenly left the White House and was escorted off the property in a great deal of hurry. In fact, he, he had to get somebody to bring his jacket out to him. And apparently the White House said that they're going to mail him his personal effects. We, we don't know what is behind this, uh, Shep. And we've uh, checked with a lot of folks. Uh, there some uh, speculation out there that uh, he had some financial problems or was involved in some financial misdealings uh, that precluded him from getting a permanent security pass. Uh, we had heard that earlier today, but then I was told that he got his permanent security clearance about six weeks ago. So I don't know how it could be related to that, but definitely a mystery, Shep, and we're going to keep shaking the trees to see what falls out. But going to work for the campaign, is that is that right, or, or is that still sort yeah, of Yeah, which, which is another part of this that doesn't add up. After walking out of the White House, apparently he's been hired by the Trump campaign, but if you were under serious investigation for some sort of financial misdealings, as has been suggested, I, I don't know why the campaign would hire you. So that's why I said it. it's it's murky and it's a mystery. John Roberts on another busy day at the White House. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thanks, it. Yeah. So how's this going over at the State Department? Let's go there. Our correspondent, Rich Edson, works at the State Department for us. Uh, Secretary Spiller Tillerson spoke, excuse me, just a short time ago. Uh, he did, Shep, and he's Secretary of State at least for another few more hours. That's when he turns over the reins to Deputy Secretary John Sullivan until the Senate confirms his replacement. The Secretary said in his address here at the State Department that he had spoken to the President around noon today, which was three hours after the President had tweeted all of this out publicly. Uh, in that talk uh, in the briefing room here, the Secretary said that, uh, that there are great people here that prefer and are pushing diplomacy over military action first, and they continue to do great work here. And then he officially said his goodbye as Secretary of State. My commission as Secretary of State will terminate at midnight, March the 31st. Between now and then, I will address a few administrative matters related to my departure and work towards a smooth and orderly transition for Secretary of State designate Mike Pompeo. Some officials here continue to maintain that the Secretary of State was essentially blindsided this morning, that he might have gotten an idea of it Friday night, but it was not confirmed that he would be out as Secretary of State until after the President tweeted it this morning. That's the contention of some officials here at the State Department. This statement went out shortly thereafter. This is from Under Secretary Steve Goldstein. He said, quote, the Secretary did not speak to the President this morning, he did this afternoon, and is unaware of the reason but he's grateful for the opportunity to serve and still believes strongly that the public service is a noble calling and not to be regretted. Shortly thereafter, the White House fired Under Secretary Steve Goldstein. Now, Secretary Tillerson took no questions to clear this up. He made his statement uh, and he left the podium here. He did 
uh, tout some of his accomplishments. You talked about the campaign against North Korea to get Kim Jong Un to the negotiating table, a strategy in Afghanistan and South Asia, and he took one more shot at Russia, saying if Russia does not change its course, then it is due for even more isolation in the future. Chef, on the timeline here, yesterday, the British came forward, including Theresa May, saying we believe the Russians may have, you know, murdered this guy with nerve agent in our country. Secretary Tillerson spoke out against the Russians. The White House, given three opportunities to do so, refused to criticize the Russians, and suddenly Rex Tillerson's out. It, are, are those dots to be connected or just to be noticed on a page? Uh, it could be noticed on a page, Shep, but if you're to believe the White House timeline in all this, and the Secretary of State knew on Friday night that he was not going to be Secretary of State anymore, and even the State Department timeline that there should have been some inkling that there was an issue here with his employment, um, then maybe the Secretary was a little freer in his comments. I'll get to what he said last night. He said, while traveling back from Africa, quote, we are outraged that Russia appears to have again engaged in such behavior from Ukraine to Syria and now the UK, Russia continues to be an irresponsible force of instability in the world, acting with open disregard for the sovereignty of other states and the life of their citizens. Also, senior State Department officials were telling us just a couple of days ago that the Secretary of State and the State Department had basically had enough with Russia on many fronts. They still wanted to try to work with the Russians, but they were going to be taking a much more aggressive posture, certainly publicly towards the Russians. That's something that we had heard from the State Department within this week. And the Secretary of State also knocked on Russia again today. Take a listen. Much work remains to respond to the troubling behavior and actions of the, on the part of the Russian government. Russia must assess carefully as to how its actions are in the best interest of the Russian people and of the world more broadly. We are still waiting for the administration to announce and release the sanctions information. That's expected to be coming soon, though that timeline is still now unclear. Jeff. Rich Edson at the State Department. Thanks. I said murdered. I meant poisoned. Apologies. Ahead, we'll hear from him. was about to be out as Secretary of State on his flight back from Africa. That's the word from Josh Letterman, foreign policy reporter for the Associated Press, who was on the plane, and he joins us now. Josh, good to see you. Nice to see you, Shep. Man, you, you arrive at 4 o'clock in the morning, I guess, at, at Joint Base Andrews, right? And that's how this day begins? That's right. We came off of the plane thinking that Tillerson had returned from his Africa trip. Nothing really unusual other than that he had come back about a day early from that trip. But he seemed in good spirits on the ride home. There was no indication from either him or from his staff that anything major like this was imminent. He, in fact, came back and spoke to us on the plane on the way back. Rich read a little bit to you of what he said about uh, Russia, some other topics. And then just a few hours after he is wheels down at Andrews Air Force Base, we get this shocking news out of the White House. Chef. You, you, you wonder about this Russia matter because the president has said as soon as we get the facts straight and if we agree with them, we will condemn Russia or whoever it may be. The Russia, the, the, the Americans and the, the British, it's one thing, isn't it? I mean, uh, uh, information like that, intelligence like that, it's all one thing. How could we, that, that doesn't make sense. That's right. It's a very different message than the one Tillerson gave on the plane really just a few hours ago now, saying that this clearly came from Russia, this poison involved in this spy case. Tillerson seemed eager to actually go after Russia to describe this as part of a broader pattern of increasing Russian aggression. And yet at the White House, we hear a lot more caution about drawing any conclusions about this incident. It does seem to speak to that rift between Tillerson and Trump that has been growing over the past few months and really seemed to explode today. Well, the president has said, that, and the White House has said, we're standing with our ally in the British. But... I mean, what you say is one thing. What they're doing is, is, is really not that, is it? Well, you're right. And the, the British really wanted the U.S. to be uh, in lockstep Which with Tillerson them. Which Tillerson was. Tillerson was. He was very similar, his comments, to that of Theresa May. But then if you look at leader to leader, the president versus the prime minister, you do see a difference in the way the White House is talking about this. And that's something that everybody is looking at very closely. How much concern is there about that matter at the State Department? 
I think the State Department is totally preoccupied with the fact that their secretary was just summarily fired today. So they're not as focused on the Russia thing as they are about who is this new guy that's going to be coming over from the CIA, what just happened, uh, and what do we have to expect after a really tumultuous year under Tillerson's leadership. You're in touch with a lot of the rank and file around there. What are you hearing about this? It, you, know, you try to think of working in an organization where suddenly the leader's out and there's a new one in. What are they saying? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it mixed? It's mixed because there's relief Shep from folks who really were not fans of Tillerson. They felt like he was not committed to diplomacy, not committed to what the State Department has traditionally done. So there's a bit of a sigh of, okay, now this guy is out and we can move on from a leadership style that a lot of folks here did not like. That having been said, that's mixed with trepidation about Pompeo, someone who has not been a diplomat in the past, who has been very brash talking as head of the CIA. And a lot of folks don't exactly know what his style is or whether will be an improvement on the way that Tillerson has run the State Department. Well, on the heels of all of this, Josh, I, you know, if, if visuals are your game, uh, these are live pictures. Clearly, the photographer is walking along now. Uh, but this is live pictures from the White House pool, and that's the wall prototypes. So the president, as the story goes, this morning, he tweets a firing, and the Secretary of State's out, and we got a new one, and then... A woman who used to run black ops sites is now running the CIA, or at least is going to be, and the president goes to San Diego to see prototypes of the wall. Uh, these are different little sections of wall, and it's a sort of uh, look at the different kinds of walls, and I think at some point we're going to have a show and tell on border walls, and we'll go there for that live. Josh, thanks. Thanks, Chef. Ahead, President Trump's pick to lead the CIA needs to make it through a confirmation hearing, but lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are already asking questions about her past, her oversight of that secret prison, her position on waterboarding, and whether it's changed. Waterboarding is torture. Would we do it again? Well, the president said during the campaign, I'm all for it. In fact, they said... Would I do it again? And he said, and I quote, quoting the now president of the United States, you bet your ass I would, unquote. So where are we? That's coming. Wall, he's done some handshaking and talking to some Border Patrol folks uh, and spreading some love down there and hearing about some of these prototypes. Right now, he's standing next to a piece of wall, which is from Cadell Construction Company in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, it, it built a, a second prototype. This design features a wide base that narrows toward the top. It, it, it pulled out a minute ago, and it, it, the, this is a White House pool. You know, whenever the president goes, they, they take a pool, and the networks rotate. So we don't have our own cameras there. We all share one camera and one producer. So that, that's sort of how it goes. And this, there are all these sections of wall, and if you're interested in them, what's this site again? This happens to be the Orange County Register, a newspaper down there, Orange County, California, which has sections of the wall as they are laid out here where the president is, uh, border fencing and, or border wall prototypes, uh, and they're all sort of laid out there. And the president said, look, I'm going to go down there and take a look at them. I want to look at them firsthand. It's a big project, costs lots of money. I'm interested in it. Here's another thing. If you're president of the United States and you're into something, you want to sell it to the people. He, you know, he's like, this is my idea. I campaigned on this. Some people are for it. Some people are very much not for it. But I'm for it. I want to do it. I want the money for it. I want to put up the wall. The president has said we need it for security. We need it for drugs. We need it for smuggling. We need, we need it. We need it. We need it. So now he's gone to the place where they have these prototypes of the wall in an effort to try to sell the wall. He wants to sell everybody on this idea. The larger the percentages are, the better chance he has to get the funding on and on and on. So there he is along the border talking about the border wall. Now, w will the president come talk to us? He very well may. Sometimes he does. Right now, he's looking at the walls, the wall prototypes. And, and they're pointing them out and showing them things. And Jonathan Hunt, our correspondent, uh, who used to hang out here with us in New York, is now California-based. Uh, and, and is there for this. John, I guess there's a little bit of wall for y'all. 
Yeah, what the president is doing here today, Shep, and he's just a few hundred yards from where we're standing right now, is looking at the eight prototypes of wall. Now, four of those are essentially all concrete. Four of them are made of a mixture of other materials. All eight of them, of course, designed to make it as difficult as possible for would-be uh, illegal immigrants to climb over, to go through, or indeed to tunnel under. Now, the president is not supposed to say because this is a government procurement process remember uh, so there are strict rules and regulations he is not supposed to say publicly and we have not heard him say publicly at this point which of these he prefers but he has said previously in general and this is supported by many border agents down here on the US Mexico border uh, that transparency in other words a certain uh, ability to see through this wall is important now four of those have that uh, modicum of transparency four of them pretty much solid concrete so you might presume that the president would lean towards one of those through which border agents can see they say that is important because they need to know who is on the other side of the wall at any point where the groups are gathering etc they say that's an important part of security so he's looking at all of these now Shep but once again he has been cautioned not to tip the scales publicly at least of course privately is free to say whatever he wants about whichever of those eight he does prefer but publicly he should not because this is a very strictly regulated government procurement process Shep? well i say we watch this process for a while and bring in john bussey uh from the wall street journal who's he's a associate editor there of the wall street journal and fox news share common ownership we're so glad to have him uh, and all of their reporters and expertise here. You know, we, we, we can look at this border wall and we can let the president look and made on this. Do we know? Uh, decisions on the wall? Yeah. I, yeah, I, do, I don't know the timeline for that. What I do think is, in, is interesting and connected in a way to the Tillerson story today is this is a sign that President Trump is really focusing on those campaign promises that yeah. he made in 2016. And by going out to California for the first time, taking a look at these uh, these pieces.